Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Status Report highlight for the 30th of January 2018. We're keeping it short but sweet this week. We've got some changes in the team, and so along with this regular dev update, Eugene is taking the time to thank some of the team members and say goodbye. Since we're at saying goodbyes, Peter is finally done with having Apple Tree and Stone Texture spamming in the game, and hints at our new dynamic ambient loot spawning. Finishing off the dev part, we have Merrick teasing about the infected movement, and our audio designer Philip sharing his latest and greatest. And as always, Beatty adds your awesome community content, so don't forget to check that out at the bottom of the status report. Before we get started, I'd just like to make a quick announcement that I'll be doing the Daisy Spotlight with Boydie in the not-so-distant future, where I would like to answer as many of your Daisy-related questions as possible. I will be pinning the Reddit discussion in the comment section below, so go on over there, post your questions, and I'll be looking forward to answering them. Now let's kick things off with lead producer Eugen. When something ends, something else begins. As I mentioned in the year in review video, it's always hard losing team members, but it's a necessary part of the development cycle. Lots of people have joined the team over the past four years, growing from a strong core into a large two-studio production with almost 80 developers full-time. Some are moving on to new challenges, and I wanted to thank them for their contribution to what DAISY should be, a monumental undertaking that all these people were part of. My thanks go specifically, but not exclusively, to Andrei Sinkovich, who is moving back home to take care of his family, for overseeing the creation of new weapon sounds, environment sounds, and making sure we are expanding upon the options available. My thanks also go to our environmental designer Senshi for making Chunaris exciting again, for his passion, for thinking outside the box, and for trying new things. At the same time, I would like to introduce Philip Chenzek. I apologise if I've just butchered all your second names. <laughs> I, I usually don't read those out, I, I'm sorry. Who will be taking over the Daisy responsibilities in our audio department, and will be sharing what's coming here in the status reports. Even though we've said a couple of goodbyes early this year, the work hasn't stopped and we have progressed significantly, so let me go over the updates that we have seen on our internal build. There are some exciting things we have been working on. Prone Combat We've had a prone meeting last week in order to look over what's next for the feature, and we have started tweaking the turn animations and bugs with collisions in different parts of the prone animation. Ladder Climbing Right now we're working on a script implementation to make ladders available in-game. As most of the stuff is already ready, we will definitely come back and check the data and overall ladder setup again, once this part of the game becomes testable. Melee Combat Another iteration of Melee Combat is now available in-game, with new heavy and light attack modes, new evades, bug fixes for targeting, and animations for melee with ranged weapons. Those are ready to get into the animation graph for quick tests. Dynamic Spawning We are trying to unify the spawning in-game to use one spawn function, and we're refactoring dynamic ambient spawning systems for the specific situations around the player. Vehicles Work has again started on vehicles as the infusion engine hierarchy for entities gets further in its development. Our focus is on the refactor with creation of locals pace, and real player character being in the vehicle rather than a dummy character. If you remember, there were issues like entering a vehicle and crashing, which would teleport you back to where you entered the vehicle, simply because the system didn't really allow for something being inside of a vehicle. It was all dummy characters and a lot of improvised hacks. You dirty hackers. Camera the camera has progressed further through several bug fixes, and we are starting to go through in-game data and collisions to fix objects with wrong collisions, which of course benefits more features than the camera itself. The Infected We have finally started again the work on the Infected. As the player character features are getting in better shape, Mirik has started a refactor on sensory mechanics, jumping and combat, and we are going to have a longer discussion on our expectations tomorrow. Besides the specifics above, the weapon team is getting through the expected list of weapons for experimental at a steady pace, implementing the new features for every weapon, adding all the animations and making sure everything works as intended. At the same time, we have people tackling issues of the last inventory implementation or looking into server browser backend. Eugen finishes up by saying he's going to shut up now and get back to work. Should bloody well think so, Eugen. Next up we have my main man lead designer, Peter Nespesny. Search for apples. Now something of an ironic user action is gone forever. The same goes for every other search action present in old DayZ. As you know, search actions were added as a placeholder to broaden the possibilities of survivalism and promoting of the hermit playstyle in terms of gathering food and other useful nature resources. May it be rocks, sticks or feathers, driven by a random number generator, which I'm really not a fan of, it was nearly impossible to balance the outcome of these actions. They were open to the abuse of limitations of the old animation system, and they also didn't make sense from a visual point of view. Now, the part of the central economy which deals with dynamic spawning is able to also spawn such ambient loot as apples, rocks or mushrooms, 
dynamically spawning ambient resources are linked with static objects in the map. For example, apples are linked with trees, and rocks with stone paths or bigger rocks. As mentioned, these items are spawned dynamically around players, and they are capped from the side of a linked object, as well as by a total maximum amount available of that specific loot type, e.g. max 3 apples per tree, 100 apples total. Once a player leaves the area, ambient loot is despawned when its lifetime ends. Of course, as it's part of the central economy, it's all properly synced, and all players will see the same ambient loot in any given area. Our solution is also friendly to server performance. Now that's what I like to hear. I'm really happy that we were able to finally add such features as it puts emphasis on our physical approach to design and provides a more authentic feel to the overall experience. And if you notice with these screenshots the dev team were kind enough to share with us this time, we can see apples around the bottom of the tree, as well as mushrooms it looks like around the bales of hay. It's going to be such a nice change being able to pick apples off the floor and knowing how many we have without having to spam a tree. And now let's move on to lead gameplay programmer Mirik. Not much has changed since the last status report, we're still dealing with pretty much the same tasks as last time, there's just one little change. We started to work on improving the infected a little bit earlier. Currently, we're focused mostly on the improving stealth mechanics, which means adding some new features for AI sensors and tweaking their parameters. Together with AI sensors, we're adding some new animations for movement. Here's a small teaser on screen now of three new movement variations. You can see that the movement is still not ideal, especially when the infected is making sharp turns, but rest assured, we will improve this. The animations are already prepared, we just need to spend time on the implementation. And now, let's move on to sound designer Philip. As Eugen already mentioned, I'll be taking over most of the audio-related tasks from Andre, and that includes writing the status reports for you. The sound department is focused on character sounds now. We could finally implement footstep sounds with the animation system as we intended. That meant creating a new animation event for every footstep in all animations. It took a while, but now we can synchronize footstep sounds with animations with much better accuracy. There are still some technical issues that have to be solved, so we hope that the programmers will find some time for us in their busy schedule. The second major feature we are working on now is attachment sounds. That means cloth rustle, backpack or weapon sounds when the character is moving. We have a working prototype, which will allow us to have different foley sounds for different types of clothes, or other things you can wear. For example, it will allow us to have different cloth rustle sounds for shirt and leather jacket. In the final mix, the sonic differences will be small, but still noticeable, and should create a bigger immersion for players. And that's a wrap. That is it for the status report highlight for the 30th of January 2018, ladies and gentlemen, short but sweet as mentioned. But I do like the idea of the new dynamic spawning of apples and mushrooms and rocks, just seeing them visually on the ground, rather than having to spam a non-visual area I guess, would be so much nicer to be able to loot and see what you can actually pick up. It's gonna be a change, that's for sure. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on this week's status report, any information there that you saw that, that piqued your interest. Of course, don't forget to check out that Reddit post I mentioned earlier. will be pinned in the comment section below. Get your questions in. I will look forward to answering them. Also, don't forget to check out the community spotlight at the bottom of the status report for all the community content created by you awesome community peeps. And uh, I'll be down there as well, checking it out. Remember to leave a like. Thank you for subscribing. And I'll see you peeps next time. <laughs>